actually going to cut this up into two different videos because I feel like this has been quite some time and I'm sorry. Um, so, first I'm going to give you guys the medical video and then for my second video, please stay tuned, click some more, watch my second video, the part two of this. Um, which is going to be all about organization for the most part. Um, and just, you know, feeling like you're on top of this thing and that cancer is not on top of you. You have the power. Mm. So today's video is about a few things. Number one, and I'm keeping it short, y'all, as promised. Number one is that I um, went to see another medical oncologist um, that's part of the, uh, the group that the breast, the breast surgeon is with that I decided to go with for the surgery. Um, and I just, I always just love conversing with like educated people and uh, also people that... Uh, you know, are educated in one particular, in one particular, I guess, field or topic. So, um, this woman, um, I don't know how I feel about saying my doctor's name, so I won't, but this woman, she was really just, really just knowledgeable, and I, we had a very long conversation. I had a whole sheet of, um, questions for her, so... I don't know if you guys could see this really oh going all off but this whole bottom half of that page was questions that I had for her and she answered them all we had lengthy conversation it was great um, but uh, so so that's great um, and when I saw her there was some news that I had to give to her like and you know this all all of this of course goes into what my actual treatment plan will be so um, the good news that I received earlier last week before my um, before my visit or it might have even been the week prior because my visit for her was on Tuesday um, was that the BRCA testing all the gene mutations that were checked for came back negative so Thanking God for small wonders. Um, well, actually, I guess large wonders, but when we're talking about this whole breast cancer thing, um, we're going to just put, but no matter small or big, we're putting that over in the plus under the check column. So these are the uh, gene mutations that I tested for. BRCA1, BRCA2, Paul B2, Check two, ATM, CDH one, PTEN, TP fifty three, and they all came back negative. There's no mutations in those genes for me, which means that I don't have a higher than normal, um, I guess uh, higher than normal possibility of having. Um, so these tested for breast and ovarian cancers, which we all know that I do have breast cancer, but I guess it wouldn't be, it was, it's not contributed to any of any sort of gene mutation. Um, so breast and ovarian cancer, um, prostate, oh, I'm not a man, but, um, okay, the BRCA2, I guess is, is the one it does for prostate cancers in men. Um, and what else did these things test for? Oh, pancreatic cancer and colon cancer and probably some other cancers that I didn't write down but the good news is that no gene mutations ain't got to worry but I am really there which also means that now my my plan for surgery now I'm a little on the fence with that um initially I was totally saying Bilateral mastectomy, take them both, I'm tired of this shit, let's get it on. Um, 
But now that I find that there's no gene mutations that would really increase my likelihood of um, of these can of breast cancer or of even a recurrence sort of thing, now I'm more like unilateral mastectomy, just the affected breast, or possibly even just a lumpectomy, which lumpectomy is looking really good to me, but I do not want to deal with radiation. It's like, I already have to go through chemo. So, I really, I'm just not trying to get shit more fried, if you know what I mean. Like, chemo is, I feel as though, already going to take a toll on my body. Now y'all want to laser beam me to death? Like, when is enough enough? You know what I'm saying? So, if I cannot do the lumpectomy without radiation, then I'm just going to most likely go with the unilateral mastectomy, um, which is a lot more invasive. Um, you know, the healing period, the healing time, the downtime is a lot more extensive. Um, I honestly would rather do, you know, just a lumpectomy and go on about my life. But, I mean, I honestly don't know. A lot of this stuff kind of... And please, you know, I'm not any sort of, like, conspiracy theorist or anything like that. But a lot of this stuff just really makes me think, like, these manufacturers of these drugs are just in cahoots with each other. And, you know, the hospitals, the whole, the whole medical profession at large just seems like, you know, like, piling drugs on top of drugs on top of drugs. And it's just kind of like... I honestly don't feel like I can really get like a a legit unbiased answer on what totally is necessary and what I could skip and still be okay. You know what I'm saying? So that's that's kind of an issue for me, but at, I'm sorry you all. Let me actually let me put this in my lap. So that's sort of an issue for me, but you know, I just got to roll with it at this point. Um, so that's good news. Um, there, I don't know. If any anyone that is watching this, if you went through, if you went through breast cancer, if you knew anyone that went through breast cancer that was HER2 positive, um, and I'm guessing maybe the other positives make a difference as well. So I'm HER2 positive, estrogen positive, progesterone positive. So they call me triple positive. Um, if you know anyone that has went through this, that did get a lumpectomy, um, what was their experience with radiology? Or, you know, what did they maybe choose to go with the mastectomy because they didn't want to do radiology? Um, just, I would love to hear some stories. I would love to know some stories. I'm on a few forums. Um, but to be totally honest, some of those forums are really exhausting. Um... They're, they're really exhausting. You have to kind of root through a lot of the topics to kind of find, to find particularly what you're looking for um, or, you know, what, what information would benefit you and, and, you know, it's just exhausting for me. Um, so if anyone could please, please share some stories with me, I would really appreciate it. You could, um, you know, put the stories down below, or I even leave my email address. If you want to directly email me, I would love to hear from you. I'd love to know about actual experiences. Um, so, there's that. Um, the other thing, so, I don't know if I spoke about, oh, I did. I spoke in my last video about my day, my full day last week on Friday of, um, going through MRI and mammogram. So when I went to go see this doctor, um, which that appointment was Tuesday of this week, and um, I actually got to see some of the images on her computer screen. The MRI, um, that image actually looked kind of cool because, you know, the, the little mass was like brightly lit, like something you see on a freaking Christmas tree. It was like reds and oranges in there. Um, and what we found is that the MRI 
measured the tumor at 2.1 centimeters. Um, whereas just, you know, like a month prior on February 23rd, the ultrasound gave it a, um, or maybe that was the biopsy. I'm not sure really which, but I did an ultrasound guided biopsy and that measured the tumor at 1.7 centimeters. So she did tell me that sometimes the MRI image is a little off and you know, the tumors always kind of measure larger, larger on the MRI. So, um, I don't know. I guess the only way to really know the exact size would probably be to excise it and um, get a measurement there. But that's not the route we're going, so we'll never probably know a true um, exact measurement of the size of this tumor. Um, but it's somewhere around there, around the two-ish centimeters. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So that brings me to the treatment. Um, let's get it on. Let's, let's see. Why do I keep hollering, let's get it on? I honestly don't know. Um, and also, I honestly don't know where my paper is. My paper that tells me the drugs that they want me to go on. Um, oh, actually, it's right here. So, uh, I'll be doing chemo for... I'll be doing chemo for a total of six treatments once every three weeks. So that's putting me at 18 weeks total. So a little over, um, between four and five months, so like four and a half months of chemo. I don't know if I'm going to say this right. Dos, dosi or dosi toxil, ty, toxil, carboplatin, herceptin, and progetta. So this is going to be this um, 18 weeks of treatment, but even after I stop the docetoxyl and the carboplatin, I'll be doing Herceptin and Progetta for the continuation of a total of one year's length. Um, and I'll also be getting new Lasta with each treatment. From my understanding, I'll be getting some other drugs to help maybe combat some of the ill side effects like nausea and um, he told me nausea and something else. So, wow. Um, then, so after, the, after this combo, this four combo, then they said I'll be doing 10 years of endocrine medication, tamoxifen. Um, they said that they used to do five years, and I, I noticed five years is like a measurement, like, I guess for like, uh, I hate to say this word, like mortality measurement um, that they do on breast cancer patients. So, I'm, so now, you know, that I'm learning more and more stuff, I'm guessing that five years used to be like the amount of time that they did research or that they followed women uh, or men after their treatment. Um, so now I guess they have elongated that. Now they've followed patients for 10 years, possibly even longer. Um, but the doctor did say that they found that patients that were on tamoxifen for 10 years versus the five years fared better, um, with longevity as far as no recurrence and no deaths. So what I'm really wondering though is, so if you're telling me I'm taking this medication for the next 10 years, what the hell is going to happen when I take that last pill? Like, that's, that's kind of scary. That's a long time to be on a medication. I feel as though that's a long time to be on a medication. It's like, if you feel as though that's necessary for an entire decade of life, like... What happens after that decade of now this is your body's normalcy of having this medication in your body and in your system and now when you take that away, what the hell is gonna happen? I mean like I I really like to know. I have to research that, so try not to get my pains in too big of a bunch. Um so yeah, that's my treatment plan guys. 
chemotherapy um, should start soon. The doctor said she couldn't really tell from the images because she wasn't able to blow them up on her screen, on her particular screen, if I had a clip or not in the tumor, which supposedly when they do biopsies, they should keep that clip inserted so that, you know, when you do go through chemo or when you get additional imaging, like, it's obvious where the tumor is or with the chemo thing and the progetta, if the tumor shrinks to nothing, then they would have that clip to know, okay, this is where the tumor was and this is where we're going to cut, um, you know, this the area of tissue that we're going to cut out. Um, so she said she saw in some notes that actually said I did not have a clip, but I think that it's a misunderstanding. I told the girl that did the mammogram that I didn't have a clip. She asked if I had one, and I told her I didn't think so because they never told me that they left a clip in my body. Um, but after she did the mammogram, she told me, oh, yeah, there was a clip there. So I think that there's just a little misunderstanding with that. Um, because the breast, um, not the breast surgeon, but the medical oncologist was telling me like, you know, you'll have to hold off on chemo until you get this clip inserted. Um, so unfortunately she hadn't gotten back to me yet. I saw her on Tuesday. Today is Saturday and I hadn't heard back from her. So I just don't really want anything else like hindering this process of chemo. Like I really hyped myself up. I'm really prepared for it. I'm ready to just just do it, get it over with. So hopefully, I guess sometime next week, I have an um, appointment with the original oncologist on Tuesday. Um, that may be the day that I get a port placed in my chest. So honestly, I as much as I dread it, I hope that that's the day because I'm just ready to get it on. Um, so that's really about it as far as the actual medical update. Um.